Welcome back, guys. We are here at the Kespa Cup going into game number three. Liv Sandbox up against DRX. And Liv Sandbox did put up a nice performance up against Dalmon. I don't know if any team in this tournament can really challenge Dalmon, but they did the best of it so far. So far in this group, yeah. I mean, on the on Group B, um, otherwise known as the Hanla Life Esports uh, group, you know, maybe. And KT. Like, yeah. Get a little bit excited, a <laughs> little bit excited. <laughs> Um, yeah. Maybe a Hanwha Life is kind of like what I'm thinking we might see that clash. Mm -hmm. um, depending on how the rest of Group B goes, we'll find that out tomorrow. Um, back to this matchup. Live Sandbox, I think, massively favored. I think we just have to, to put the truth on the table yeah. for a second. And, you know, we'll talk about uh, when we hit these drafts, but Live Sandbox is kind of... They've kind of had this distinct style in the tank support, tank top lane, usually Renekton. And then, uh, you know, they like to run the Nidalee jungle. And it's not the first time we've seen it from them. And we might see it again if DRX doesn't draft against it. The Galio has kind of been the response to that so far. We've seen also Talia, um, even just in that previous match we were just talking about with Damwon. So the identity for this team, I think, right now is Fate's a strong Syndra player, and Krakow's jungle is pretty legit. Uh, otherwise, you know, we're just seeing pretty predictable drafts from them. And maybe that changes in this series because it's definitely a different opponent, a much weaker opponent uh, in the new roster of DRX. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, you maybe missed the first day of the Kespa Cup. We're going to look at them in a second. But this is not uh, World's DRX. This is not uh -huh. summer <laughs> LCK Summer Finals DRX. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, definitely live sandbox should be favored in this one. They have looked pretty good. I, I think individually, they are a lot of up and coming uh, great parts, I would say, as players. And, you know, they will develop as a squad as the season comes along, of course. Whereas on the side of DRX, definitely some big changes here. We got Solka there in the mid lane, who I believe is squad. Yes, that's quad. And uh, definitely a strong individual player. They haven't really shown too much as a team. I think their bot lane could be considered a weakness for now, but we'll have to wait and see how they develop. Yeah, uh, some of the weird picks we've seen from DRX is we saw Soka um, try to run that uh, mid Kalista, and it didn't work out. We've seen Becca uh, run that support Galio that you know can be used against those double tanks. Uh, maybe something they go to again, not the Callista, hopefully, but the maybe support Galio, or maybe even a mid Galio if they do see that style of play once again from the Live Sandbox draft. Again, only time will tell, but I, on one hand, I'm cool with them uh, leaning into their style, but it is a red side draft for them this time, so it's a little bit tougher to go that way. Um, with the first pick, Renekton. But on the other hand, I, I, I want to see more from this squad. I mean, we know Krakos can play Olaf in Italy, but what else can he do? Can he play Alilia? Can we see a more roaming-based comp? Can we see um, something that's a little bit more focused on hard engage rather than slow tank lines crushing in and then just throwing spears, right? Mm -mm. Not to oversimplify things, but that is what we've seen from Liv Sandbox in this tournament. Yeah, well, let's see how this one does go along. As DRX, they're going to take away Fate Syndra because, well, they don't want him to play Syndra and they don't want Summit to play Aatrox. Pretty just straight up as that. They're also going to take away Pantheon off the board. Some of their tier bands there on the side of Live Sandbox as well. You know, it gives Pyoshik the Graves if he wants it. And uh, I'm thinking he probably should uh, take that. So... That's been the common. Samira is also open with the Lucian band, so that's another common priority pick. Those have been the two biggest blue side first picks when left open mm -hmm. right now. It's, Samira is, um, I think, 10, I don't know, sorry, 11 out of 12 games so far. Now we're in the 13th. Mm -hmm. but. <laughs> yeah, she's, uh, she's been around. Renekton. Again, just going to Renekt us. <laughs> yeah, I feel I'm, like I'm I made getting it pretty wrecked <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, if that lasts for more than uh, two series, you might want to call a doctor. But yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he's got Croc on his team, so maybe it's that. Is it? It's just the same draft every time. I we have to see a Nidalee ban from DRX, or I'm just like, are they just third picket? <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I, I guess I got ahead of myself there because they can still just grab that. Yeah, Graves should be pretty obvious here. I, I don't, I'm not sure why Croco didn't pick it. To be honest, it, it just looks so strong right now. Well, it's because Live Sandbox seems like they just want to stay one-dimensional for this group for now. Maybe we'll see something different later, but not right now. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> as Pioshek will get the Graves. Surprise, surprise. It almost looked like they wanted to maybe deny uh, with the Nidalee pick. He was hovering it, but already there's the Galio. It's like, oh, so I see you guys are doing the same thing again. Um, yeah. The other option would have been to grab uh, Talia for the jungle for Pyoshik if they wanted to really follow in Dom One's footsteps. It's I mean, interesting. If you get Nidalee, you get it here. You, you know? <laughs> okay, it's different. Okay, well, Talia. Uh, similar vein, I suppose. Can have a little bit more sustain on the damage and a bit more utility with the wall, but you would miss the healing. Um, Talia, pretty high tier at the moment, so they're just going to go ahead and do that and try to keep the Graves at a bit of range. Fates? And, yeah. You talked about Fates Syndra. It's his most picked this year, um, and it's obviously his most popular champ or the champion he likes to play the most. It's been banned away. Um, going down the list for him, you know, Azir is one of his other top picks, not really very meta right now at all. Zoe might be the go-to for him in this particular draft. Not too dissimilar to Syndra, but obviously serves a very different role, which is why potentially we're not seeing that Nidalee come through. It's Natalia instead. Callista removed here. Take out the Orn. And I wonder what that, uh, what that final ban here for DRX ends up being. Is Zoe seems like the safe move if you want to take away one of the top mage mid laners, but they take away the MF. Oriana is also open. You know? <laughs> he might just go for it here. Um, it's not bad. I mean, they on the side of Live Sandbox, they do have a couple of ball carriers already. If they did want to consider that, it's uh, obviously a very safe pick, but looks like they might just go ahead and pick up their... Uh, AD carry first, save the uh, essential counter pick for the mid lane. Just wait until they see everything on the side of DRX first. Rel is globally banned, by the way, so don't get too excited. Bans at home. Yeah. Still in the client, obviously, but cannot be selected. Hecarim is not also going to be a thing here. Seraphine. I'd be down to see Seraphine support. Not really, but kind of. Well, someone's going to play Oriana, and it's going to be Solka. Diane, <laughs> making me excited, but just the trolls <laughs> coming through. Having a bit of fun here, DRX. Okay, pick hey, Vola Bear. That's the first time for the tournament, I believe. Tournament first for that one has not been popular. I don't think played at all in the uh, LCK Academy tournament that happened recently either. So definitely kind of a world's meta thing lingering on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Vola Bear, not bad. Definitely can do pretty well in the lane against the Croc. Uh, to a certain extent, I think the Twisted Fate does kind of fit the bill, but I think the Zoe is like right on the money in terms of how this comp operates. It's again, two tank into poke damage, right? Zoe's bubbles at range is going to kind of chip away. Uh, you have obviously uh, Jin for his ultimate um, curtain call to, to have that same sort of chip damage. It's really similar in theme all across the board to what we've seen from them this entire time, minus the, the Nidalee, right? And, you know, as you point out, Talia does kind of fit some of the same roles. Mm -hmm. A little bit more hard engage with the Talia. On the side of DRX, I mean, same sort of counter with the Galio support that we've talked about so much. Really strong initiation with Shockwave and the Volibear. They just kind of jump into the fight, so... Mm -hmm. I, I don't think this is as cut and dry as the draft we saw with Damon where it was like, okay, late game, they win no matter what. This is definitely a, a much closer draft that's going to be more execution-based again. Yeah, it'll be pretty interesting to see how this one does go because I, I feel like DRX are giving themselves a pretty good chance uh, up against Live Sandbox, right? I mean, Live Sandbox seems to be the stronger team uh, individually and as a team. I think they're playing really well together so far, but... Uh, DRX, not a not a bad draft here, I would have to say. They have some really excellent team fighting. Yeah, I think things can. The, the only way this snowball is really hard for 
uh, live sandboxes if they get early turret leads and then just are able to just push lanes and constantly poke. Like they've got so much siege damage with this composition. Yeah, well, looks like we're ready to jump into game number three. So let's get into that right now. I've actually kind of been shocked with how little we've seen Zoe in this tournament. I think she works really well with the two tanks, with the new tank items that we're seeing. Um, and was really popular in the, uh, in, in the Korean server, like the ladder, and also has been popular, you know, with the uh, LSK Academy series I was talking about, which is the most recent term before this has happened, which is why I reference it so much. And finally, it seems like it's making a little bit of a comeback to the Zoe pick. Yeah, open. Way seeing back. it every once in a while. Um, it's not the, the Zoe of old where you just one-shot anything that moves, um, but you Many do have some good awesome. opportunities on to especially something like an Orianna. I feel like um, the Samira should be pretty well protected. The Graves has the ability to dash away from it, can kind of handle it. He's not going to be entirely squishy uh, to deal with that Zoe. And from ahead, I think Live Sandbox's comp is going to be really oppressive. You yes. mentioned all of that uh, poke. If, if they're just like controlling all of the cardars and stuff, that's when Zoe gets really obnoxious. But it's not just Zoe. It's like if you don't have vision to see Thea, to have the follow up coming from the Jin, and of course you've got bubbles and everything coming over the wall, you're not really going to have that good of a time. So I think the, the goal here for Live Sandbox is to get ahead and try to go from there. It feels like the the kind of goal for for Live Sandbox is to get the mid turret like it, it, if they can right if they can get enough objectives to grab that mid turret early. I feel like that's when the map really opens up for them, and they can do a lot more. This is uh, very dangerous for Croco. Yeah, he's fine. Spotted spotted Graves on the ward, so he was like, okay, I know exactly what to do. Just. Smites the big raptor there. Maybe he wanted to save it for the blue, but that's okay. We'll just go ahead and secure that and waste a bunch of Pioshek's time. There's a lot of pings coming in from Pioshek uh, on the blue buff, just letting uh, the uh, letting Becca know that he's there because Becca was going to ward the river at that moment. See that information is being shared. It's it's fun to analyze pings sometimes because it's the closest glimpse to, to comms that we'll get right in a game like this. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I almost missed that one. It's okay. Fine. Sorry, I get stressed out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've missed quite a few CS in my time, you know. I mm -hmm. haven't we all? Post traumatic mis CS disorder. Is something I've been. I think it'd be cool if League of Legends just tracked all of your lifetime stats. Like outside of the game too, or just like? No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think. It's like how many times I spilled water every time too. I'm like, there's no Google, uh, not yet. <laughs> Who knows how far Riot's gonna go up that chain? But uh, yeah, just in the game, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe how many times you've taken the blue buff, the Baron, stuff like that. One stat I was always curious about is um. Uh, I'd love to see in game is uh, all minions spawned and how much you CS. Like, mm -hmm. how much percent of all minions that have spawned in the game did you get in your lane up yeah, until well, a certain point? You can just ask LS at any point in the time. He'll just uh, he'll look at the timer. He's like, yeah, exactly. 437 minions have spawned, and now uh, we're getting to the cannon wave and two waves. Uh, just wait for that one. This is when you want to go for a back. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, I guess. I guess if he's here. Uh, which he's not today. He will be. Um, he's he's that for us. For I can I can be satisfied with that. This is, this is gonna be interesting game. Yeah, Zoka is uh, in a bit of trouble. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he might be able to trade back here on a fate. He's gonna flash forward and try to get this one to flash away from fate. We'll do it. He actually as is, first blood does come in. That stolen flash. <laughs> yep. So he doesn't even have to use his real flash, which is really nice. Actually, kind of a. Really tragic moment for Solka. It looked it looked really good, but we just didn't know where Croco was. Yeah, it's a bit rough because I mean you don't have vision on the top side. Yeah, he, so. I mean look at this. There's just no there's no vision here whatsoever. Like this is his perspective, and he's like, oh man, effort's coming up. Better go this way. 
and then picks up the flash and bye bye. Yeah, the flash forward was interesting. Um, you weren't ever gonna get out of that one, and now you're mid susceptible to more ganks. He still has his cleanse at least, so it's not like he could just be bubbled into seismic shoved or anything like that without any recourse. But so then you've also given Fade the free flash, so that's another issue. So you've got you're missing that now. In a lane where Fate can kind of chip you down and look for uh, potentially snowballing the slain into a further lead. The kill went to Croco, which is pretty hype for the fans. Croco's like the new most popular player in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a good name, and uh, I don't know, he's, he's pretty aggressive. I like his play style. He showed a lot of promise on day one. So a lot of us have been talking about him, especially over here on the caster desk. Yeah. And. If you play enough Talia, if you get fed in the early game, you can just sometimes do some ridiculous things. A against squishy members, too, you can just one-shot them. Like, it, it becomes very oppressive uh, if you can get those early kills. He even went for the Sork Boots first, so just trying to get around the map really fast. Well, it's crazy, too, when you you know, when you get the, the upgraded boots and then you have uh, you get fed, like, you get another kill, then suddenly you're just... The other jungler has a hard time even existing, right, or even getting farm. And, you can kind of chase and graze around the rest of your lanes if they're going well. And in this case, Jin is Rude's having a good time on that one. Oh, they're going to try to paint them in here. The effort with the Aftershock is going to take so much of that damage as Bao goes in, trying to punish Krakow here. But a big seismic jump, and Krakow gets over the wall with the perfect amount of HP to survive. And that is a disaster now for DRX, as this should be totally cleaned up. Although, Root doesn't no have six, six, unfortunately, either. Yeah. He's like, oh, we get those minions. That's not enough. An effort. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, you can't do that alone. <laughs> so, you turn that around. He's got to wait here for fate, and then maybe he can. And Summit uh, is walking over wards, so Soka's just going to... It's almost felt like VM that first uh, recall. It's <laughs> so they're like, yeah, okay, nice try, but not going to happen. Well, uh... This is a really nice start for Sandbox. You have to say, live Sandbox. Let's say they're full sponsor. I, I'm like, I've never even really commentated Sandbox before. How do I already have yeah. the bad habit of not saying the full name? <laughs> well, you've watched I've watched share. a lot, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> watched enough Sandbox games. Now live Sandbox. Big trade up here at the top side. King and trying to hold him down there. But he'll just back away. What an incredible set of a mechanical plays from Croco, though, in that last fight. Getting over the wall with a flash, understanding he had just enough health to live through that. Kingen doesn't see Croco speak, speak of the devil. Yeah, just going to clear out that ward. Take another look at how this fight started. Yeah. So recall your attempted to go in. He goes in for an effort. And you can see. Effort is just able to take through all of his damage. He has the flash over the wall. The Croco continues to do damage, has the knockback, and then Groot's set up perfectly for the follow-up kill. There's a sleep that's not even necessary. And Koshik is uh, barely able to escape because Root doesn't have six. He does now, but at that moment didn't. If he did, that would have been another kill. Unless he missed every shot. Don't expect from Root. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a nice little bait. They they didn't really know that uh, Croc was hiding in the bush there, so able to create that three on three effort had a really nicely timed uh, ground pound, to deny the justice punch from the galleon. So mechanically a bit outplayed and kind of just baited into that fight. Turns into three zero now in favor of Sandbox. The effort is you know really the in this engage like the actual. Um, veteran player, right? I mean, he's still fairly young, and he hasn't been playing as long as some of the other players we have in this tournament, but he handled that situation really well. There was no fear, um, you know, and he understands what, it, what tools he has. He's got a Hex Flash, so very comfortable. It's, well, it didn't go so well. But he got redemption. Which so. is nice. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled very high. That's how you know he's a very skilled Zoe player. Good at rolling the items. Yeah, actually, for your when, w. when I was, uh, you know, looking at how Zoe works as a champion, like quite a while back, because I was like, I don't know this champion that well. I, I was like, I was watching all the games, and be like, wait, can you just have that? Like, <laughs> yeah, you used to be able to pick up teleport. Yeah. I mean, you could just get lucky, pick up teleport. Your lane's not going well, or it's going really well. You come back, 
after just buying items with a free teleport, is like, okay, this, uh, this needs to be removed. They removed it pretty quickly, so props to Riot on that one, I suppose. Really nice bubble. They're going to force out the cleanse. Good follow-up from Solka, but he might just be punished once again. He's blowing all of his summoners, but he's still going to get caught here. And now he is caught in between a literal rock and a hard place because the wall was there to corral him into the corner. And now, unfortunately, Solka 0 and 2. And this will be the free Rift Girl over the side of Liv Sandbox. And we're starting to see, uh, you know, a little bit more depth from Live Sandbox. So this draft is working really well for them. They've, you know, showcased that they can put Croco on a third jungler here, and he's very, you know, he's excelling very well. The rotations are, are good. Like, Live Sandbox looks like a team that, even though this roster has come together fairly recently, uh, you know, the changes, uh, they fit together really well. Watch this exchange again as Fate sets Whoa. this off. And then, you know, just drops in the redemption. They have to continue chasing through it. You mentioned the, the wall is there. Effort comes in first, and then no way out. Yeah. It's just kind of bullying at this point. Solka can't get away from everything. He had to blow literally everything, including his ultimate, to try to get out of that one. And, you know, he has chosen to try to go down the river twice. I mean, he didn't really have a choice there because his allies were there, and he also got bubbled through about seven minions. <laughs> it's not even possible unless they're building them up. But, uh, you know, it was just a really nicely aimed bubble from Fate, and he was just uh, he was stuck. There wasn't really any option for him to get away from that one. But, yeah, a bit unfortunate for him, but things are looking pretty good for Liv Sandbox here. Yoshik. Trying to turn the tides and maybe make something happen, but Krakow's also waiting down yeah, here. Yeah, he's got his Weaver's Wall almost off cooldown, but it's not ready yet, so I don't think they can make a play happen in the lane, but they can control the vision. Got the Tribush warded. And it looks like they want to try to bait, maybe potentially engage here. Vision control. Drake's not up for two and a half minutes, so I don't know if DRX should even really consider fighting here. They should take the minions. It looked like if the Drake was up, this would have looked really cool, but it's not, so actually it doesn't really accomplish anything at the moment. Yeah, it was interesting because the Sandbox were like, huh, they're playing pretty far up. It's like they read the fact that maybe someone was down there, so they didn't want to just drop the Rift Herald and maybe not have it work out very well, so they're just going to rotate mid, and uh, this is pretty free because, again, the Graves was down bottom side and he had to back, so they're going to get the one plate plus two. And, and it's the mid turret. Yeah, yeah, it's the mid turret too with a comp that has insane oh poke with Zoe. And this is the the reaction is slow mid. So now top is left open. Um, Summit's just gonna get some plates and catch up, kind of narrowing that CS gap a little bit. It feels like things are all bad here and, and going bad from bad to worse potentially <laughs> here in a second. It's okay. Yeah, just a little bit out of position there from the side of DRX. Koshik, you'll notice that he went for the Immortal Shield Bow, shield bow in this game. We've yeah. seen a lot of Gale Force Graves, and we've seen some of the reasons why it's strong. But uh, here he's taking kind of the safe route. We also have that for the Samira, which is pretty standard for her. I think, but, the, yeah. I, I think the hope here, Valdez, is that we're going to have some nice shockwave engages uh, that allow Samira to come in, get her S grade, and he's going to pop off in the fight um, when the CC comes through. I think that's the, the idea, the concept. I mean, that's why Samira builds this. It's for ultimate more than anything else. But Graves, too, just wants to walk forward and <laughs> finish off those targets. Collateral damage going to be really nice if you do get a big shockwave. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of burst on the side of the sandbox. Maybe he just wants to be able to stay alive and not just have to, you know, he could gale force forward and do like a little bit of burst damage himself. But if he just gets burst, you know, it just gets popped in like two seconds and gets CC'd to death by Alistair Renekton, then probably not going to be a very good look. So he wants to play a little bit more defensive in his item build to have some survivability, I suppose. And really nice control ward there. Kind of keeping things in the dark for a second here for Lip Sandbox, but they do have this ward here on blue side. And uh oh. Yeah, and uh, again, <laughs> it's going to help him out there, but from downtown. Can Fate, Fate. Yeah, can he get another one? Not quite, but not again, that much range. Saved by the bow, the shield bow, that is. 
Um, had he not had that, he would have been dead in that exchange. Uh, still means that the Drake will go to the side of Live Sandbox with Infernal Soul on the way. Saved by the Bow, one of my uh, most anticipated sitcoms for 2021. Mm -hmm. We're going to be seeing a lot of that, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> In League of Legends, at least. Yeah. Looking for that one uh, next year. Wait for regular season for that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, things are looking pretty bad for DRX. And I think the the hopes and dreams of the rest of this mid-game not going worse for them is really on Soka in the mid lane and his setups with uh, Shockwave. Otherwise... I mean, Volibear's usefulness is kind of worn out. Like, I don't want to say he's totally useless in a fight, but, you know, part of why he's strong is he can roam and, and do a lot versus turrets in the kind of early to mid game, but we've kind of we just kind of missed that part of the game. He's really strong with the uh, new Sunfire Aegis, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but I'm not feeling like he's going to be the, the difference maker in this game. He's just a farm bot right now in the top lane. All right, trying to trade here onto Renekton. Pioshik is waiting for Krako. Goes over the wall a little bit early. May have spotted him there on the okay, control well. We're going in here. Nice right, base to so spoke too soon on this one. Yeah, just one on one. The Weaver's Wall gets into position. Galio not able to get the kill. He's still going under that turn, and they will eventually pick up the kill on the dive, but Kingen is dead. At least able to trade pretty nicely at the backside of it, but. It was a little bit delayed. You know, they, they were a little bit hesitant to continue on that one, and Becca kind of forced the issue, which got the kill, but at the same time, Liv Sandbox are getting a lot of other objectives on that. Yeah, I mean, that was, I mean, it's almost like I literally cast or blessed uh, the Volibear in this situation, saying like, well, I mean, is he really going to be able to get value out of his ultimate? Is he really going to be able to dive a turret? That's, I think we've just passed that part of the game. And then he does it, but the trade here is definitely a, a Sandbox favored one. Get a second Rift Herald here, and mid turret gone. And now this is when the map is like completely open for them, uh, and we might just see the game turn into you know like my low rank solo queue games A Ram in the mid, <laughs> where it's just like uh oh, he's just gonna keep Zoe hitting us with bubbles. So I mean, it takes so long to actually kill uh, Summit here that like, the the rest of the team is able to rotate off it. I mean, the rest is history. Here, in fact, to play by play, and you already did that. Mm. It's a good trade for them. 5 1 now. Only have 3,000 gold, but I think the, the state of the compositions and, and the power spike that is about to be hit for Live Sandbox, or is really being hit as we speak, is the scarier part than the 3,000 gold lead that will extend. We've seen a lot of double wards in this tournament. Those bad men. Yeah. You know, it's the Kespa Cup, all the new <laughs> rosters. This is like the one tournament where we get to use that excuse for you guys, you LCK teams. We'll see how it is come LCK time next year because they'll have uh, a bit more time, you know, another month under the belt and a, a whole Kespa Cup tournament of experience to get used to their lineups and some of that. Yeah, not to mention, I mean, there's, there's still a small amount of time between uh, now and, and then. That was, uh, he missed, he was a little bit too far away from the cannon, so he tried to gale force it. But he, he just ended up looking silly. Look, we don't judge, unless we commentators oh, paid to. We absolutely <laughs> <laughs> You know, if it was a Graves of my solo game, I would have let it go. All right. Once again. Here's another dive, and again, Krako is here, but it's a three on two. The turret's no Once longer again? disabled, though, and yeah. I... Summit not taking nearly as much damage. They actually split focus onto Krako because Summit got into a good spot there behind the, the turret. Zoe is pushing bot right now pretty hard as well. And with Fate in this position, it's one of those trades that gets not as extreme as the last one. The last one was ends up being really bad for DRX, but it's uh, it feels like too little too late, these attempts. And because Krako has been able to follow these rotations so well, uh, they're, they're really grasping at straws, it almost feels like here. It's not over, the game's not over by any means, but it's slipping away. We're going to have to see some really nice plays from Solka, I think, in the upcoming Drake fight, and the yeah. Baron's now spawning. I do like that they're being proactive 
um, even prior to the dragon fights, because sometimes it can feel a bit dire. If you're down already and you're trying to fight a dragon fight, you just don't have the vision, you don't have the positioning, your lanes are not in a great spot most of the time. Yeah, I mean, if you win that, if you get that kill, you know, this might just be a free Drake, might yeah. be a free Infernal. So, or at I least mean, it gives you a better chance. Yeah, you know? it's it's calculated, right? The timing in which that play is made, it's not random. It's not quite as grasping as far as I alluded to, but... And, look uh, at the split here against oh potential boy. shockwaves. Yeah, okay. They're spreading out here. And this is part of the problem, you know, we talked about this. Live Sandbox gets ahead. And it's really difficult to just enter this choke. You would love to set up good shockwaves and good engages and, you know, get that bubble bear into the back line. But before the fight even begins, you're getting poked out. And now they're trying to funnel into the mid lane and take down the turret. But a really nice uh, response here from the side of Live Sandbox is they're going to force this fight. In comes Galio, but already a ton of damage done. And the chase is not over yet. You see the Talia trying to get in there, as is the Jin. Becca, that was a. That was just really overzealous by good friend. Uh, <laughs> Pipe trying dreams. To make, yeah, trying to make that happen. It's like, don't let my memes be dreams. And uh, you just end up being a meme in that one. Well, I got to say, uh, the idea was good. You know, OK, we're going to give up the Drake, Infernal Drake, third Drake, go bring them on soul point. And it's an Infernal soul as well, obviously very powerful for the comp they're running. So they try to go for the mid turret instead, but it's the it's the collapse here that's so good. The summit comes in, forces King in, into a really awkward spot. Bao actually ults initially and then realizes, okay, he needs to get out. And you can see the they're just two behind, and there's just too much poke. The health bars are so low before they even really get to use that ultimate. Trying to turn it there is just it's ridiculous. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, it's, it's a ridiculous <laughs> notion, but I mean. Sometimes you gotta try, I guess. I mean, that's that's my only. Um, yeah. I suppose in his mind he was like, "Well, I'm not gonna get away, so maybe I can do this." Uh, looks like a nice pick here onto Pyoshik, as the bubble will miss, but it's four on one, so he is going to die just a, a bit out of position there, as he didn't have any sweeper available and he was spotted on a ward. And that means that they're just going to take this Baron. I, I don't think that DRX at this point in time can really challenge it without their jungle, especially. And so they're just going to have to let this one go. Another big win here for Liv Sandbox. Yeah, it's uh, wins after wins on these so far, unfortunately, for DRX. And it's it's kind of going back to what we were talking about in terms of the poke. The mid lane's been open. So there's just always a vision advantage, too, which is even was can further um, makes the situation worse for DRX. I mean, it's a problem that begets a problem when you're getting out pokes, the push is really strong here in mid, you try to retake vision and you're getting chipped at. Every time you try to take a fight, everyone's already lost a third of their health bar, as it feels like. Mm -hmm. And then your only hard engage is not a tank, but actually, you know, perhaps a shockwave. See, so yeah, I forget bumped by the wall yeah. like, into a better position. <laughs> Actually, feel, it's like a feels good man. Thanks, Talia. Bumping me back. And they're not going to overstay their welcome. They should have a lot of gold after that one. This so. is the vision problem I was talking about as well. Pyotrick is like, okay, I need to clear wards. I need something. I need anything. If you don't have that vision, you can't go for a flank. You can't wrap around. But he dies trying. So. Yeah. He's actually. Uh, well, we're going to have another engage here. Summit is in the back line. Look at him. He is just unkillable as he has that Gore Drinker pumping. And now they're just going to all get hunted down once again. Nice shockwave, but might just be a little bit too little too late. And this is what happens against this composition. You're just going to get hunted down, slowed for days, and poked out. The fact that the curtain call is being used this late in team fights to just chase uh, retreating members, Ooh. like that's the play. That was actually a nice little sleep escape from veteran Pyoshik. Um, he's but got a target on his back. <laughs> he certainly does. <laughs> Always feel like he's got a target on my back. That's what he said. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was just going to say, like, the fact that you see the, the <laughs> curtain call used late in these fights is like, that's a, that's a story of the game state, right, that we're in right now. The, the situation for DRX is like, uh, Root is not looking to slow members to win the team fight or to get those kills. He's like, he's like, all right, so how can I make sure nobody escapes? Like, that's, that's where we're at. As, as you said, Summit comes in. Everyone's lost a third of their health. Efforts lost half his health bar, but that's he's done his job. And then it's a ton of poke damage. The shockwave is like, I mean, you're trying, right? 
uh, to, to escape with Shockwave. I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. He didn't have Flash, so it's like, okay, you know. <laughs> Let me throw this out, see what happens. Yeah. Uh, the game is is all but but locked up here for DRX. Yeah. It's got a bit out of control, you know. It's it's one fight after the other where it's like they haven't found their engages. It's kind of obvious what their what their comp wants to do. Uh, you got Galio and Bola Bear going with a head full of steam. And you got a Oriana Ball hoping to engage in that way. You try to get onto the Jin, who's a, you know a little bit immobile, and look for some of those squishy back lines, but it just hasn't really worked out for them. As you know, the Baron is down. They don't have it anymore, but they're still just so far ahead. They're like 10,000 gold ahead right now, so they just push in here and nearly take out an inhibitor. Well, they might take out King and if he, if he sticks around any longer, I think he will get out of the way. Well, he's slept, but he gets out with his uh, leap there. That's on cooldown, but I don't know if that's really going to save them, uh, save this inhibitor. Mm -hmm. And now it's Infernal Soul set up. Easy, take it. The waves are pushing. Teleport pop actually coming in. Oh, I thought that was a teleport. Yeah, okay, okay, well, I'm heading there to take care of this. Uh, but that's the only thing that's like left open. That's the only um, page that's been unturned for DRX at this point is the top lane, which is where everybody's heading next. Yeah, I mean, it's the one lane they haven't pushed yet, and they have this lead, so they're just going to look to push and try to take a team fight up in that location. We got Baron in two minutes, so, and Elder in five and a half after the <laughs> Infernal Soul was just taken, so there's no big objectives very soon. Yeah, you know, I, I have a feeling we might not see the Elder Drake in this game. It's possible. It's possible. Look at the push pop, and this, either you react if you're DRX or you just lose the game. Here's Fate, and mm, do or die, or, or die or die. Reacting to this. Yeah, this is uh, Kingan is still trading in the mid lane <laughs> against Summit. And uh, yeah, I guess they're just going to let this inhibitor go. Doesn't really. And they were trying to get the Galio into the front. They don't have their Vol of Air again. Because he does not have teleport. Summit does. So he's just going to have to go all the way around and hope to get a flank. But he's spotted the whole way around. And they might just be able to collapse onto him here. Nice bubble. Looks like we might have some bear meat. Doesn't have his ultimate dinner. this time. It's pretty fast, but not as fast as the portal jumping Zoe. Yeah, his ult was like five seconds away too, which is unfortunate. Not like he would have been able to do anything if he had it, but he would have lived probably. The inhibitor goes down, and it almost just feels like Live Sandbox, they're playing a choose your own adventure game of how they want to end this game. Yeah, and they might do it on the backs here of the Gargoyle kill. Okay, he's gonna be able to flash over that wall. And it looks like they're just going to take down the Nexus turrets and go for the ends here. Pyoshik and Bao trying to get in the front here. Bao looking to finally make a difference in this game, but he just gets kited out as some fighting happens up in the top side. You can see Rude trying to add to his damage numbers, but that's going to do it. 14 to 1. Just one kill for the side of DRX as they do go down here in a pretty one-sided victory inside of Live Sandbox. And even though DRX seems like a shadow of their former selves, it is a new roster, and a lot of people are probably wondering what this team's potential is. Uh, because they had such great international results last year and, of course, an LCK summer, but it is early times, right? Rosters take time to build synergy and, uh, and to obviously get that experience in televised matches, pro games, so for DRX, a lot of these players have played only in challengers um, and a lot of solo queue games. Highest pressure tournament they've been in against the best teams they've ever played against some of these players. Obviously, Pyoshik being the exception, just came back from Worlds himself. Um, you know, their hopes in this tournament are in their final game against Nongshim Red Force. Uh, and even if they win that, they don't necessarily get through, but they have to win mm -hmm. that one now. And it is not going to be an easy opponent. It's, no. looking, it's looking dire, so I'm trying to say in a nice way. Yeah, uh, they haven't really proven that they can uh, mix with some of the, the good teams here in this group, and that is going to come back to bite them. I think their only victory was over Afrika. 
if I'm not mistaken, yeah. from the side of DRX. And uh, I think both of these teams need some time to develop, right? Uh, Afrika, they have some more veterans in their lineup, but they, they seem pretty messy as a team so far. They they need that month <laughs> before the LCK. Yeah, I think Whereas, so. Whereas uh, DRX, you know, as you mentioned, some, some younger players, some up-and-comers also do need some time. So it's no shame if they do drop out of the Kespa Cup in this fashion. But uh, props to Live Sandbox. They played a, a really clean game there, and they didn't really look like they were going to fall behind in that one at all at any time. Yeah, to be honest, I feel like if DRX was in Group B, we might have seen a better performance. You know, there's a lot of opponents in there that I think that they would feel more comfortable playing against. So all those players that would have played against them in Group B were, like, in challengers. So, you know, they kind of – yeah, yeah <laughs> the academy teams over there, they've, they've got some experience with. But, yeah, I mean, this is kind of um, – I think uh, I think in the interview, Piochik said it's going to be a good learning experience for our roster uh, in the video they did a few days ago when we had those videos playing. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that is kind of how you look at this this tournament in a lot of ways. It's like for these new rookie players, like this is what the LCK will be like. Like get used to it. Get your stage fright over now. Um, play against the legends that you watched. Some of these players are so young, they have seen some of the older players in this tournament uh, when they were just fans and solo queue players before they even became um, amateur pros to now being – you know, in franchise League of Legends teams. So this is a time where you, you go into LCK next year with a lot more experience than you had if you didn't play in this one. Yeah, uh, certainly the prep time will be important, whereas that's part of the reason why Dom one just looks so good because they've had months and months of prep time, if not years, uh, with a <laughs> very similar lineup here, just replacing one player at a time, essentially. And it uh, looks like we, got, like we got our highlights ready. We'll be kind of a, a live sandbox highlight reel as they were definitely bullying Zulka right from the get-go. This is the unfortunate flash forward where Fate's like, oh, I'll pick that up and get my way out of here. It wasn't a bad play per se. I mean, we were probably did like 20 damage of a kill there, so. Effort responded to that one really nicely. They baited it so well. Draco able to get out of there with just a little bit of health and the teleport advantage going the way of the Zoe as Orion had to take cleanse, which is one of those things that we didn't mention in the game, but it's uh, it's a pretty massive win in terms of just mad pressure. Uh, of course, the Orion had to take that cleanse and you've got the teleport yourself. Yeah. This is a really nasty situation for Solka, who, as you said, got full lead. He's Weaver's walled out, trapped in a Wall in a hard place mm -hmm. in this case. It's a rocky wall. Yeah, you know, it's Aaliyah, she summons the rocks. And this is um, where, you know, I jinxed King as ultimate, but he did end up picking off that kill there. That was close, too. Yeah, like, I think he got it with the with the Q, actually. Yeah. Or, or with the W, I think it was. He almost got flashed away on it. Then he would have looked silly. Yeah, but, that would have uh, been a disaster. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely a very hesitant dive. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't a confident came back to fight them. And you can see here they would love to have, you know, just go in, engage, get some good shockwaves, but it was kind of just they were running away the entire time. Well, this is the first fight where everything we talked about with the problems with if you lose that uh, mid outer turret, like this is where things start to really be a problem with the range damage that uh, Live Sandbox has. And that was like the fight that illustrates our point in draft. Um, and that was the first one of many of these we were going to have. And then it felt like DRX just couldn't get their heads straight in terms of the macro. Um, they went for this turret after losing the break, overextended, lost this fight. Lost two inhibitors shortly afterwards and kind of gave up the third almost for free because the rotations were just a little bit slow and King was out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I don't mind current Renekton, actually. What he can do if you get into a back line with uh, the very common or Drinker Randuins combo as your first two items, it's like, First of all, you're not going to die. You're also taking away a bunch of DPS with the random active. So it's like you're, you have tons of survivability, you got lifesteal, and you're also denying DPS, and you're being annoying and doing a lot of damage in the back line. It's just he brings a lot more with some of these, uh, you know, some of the new item builds, especially with the Gore Drinker. We'll see if that item gets uh, uh, tuned, we'll say. I think the, the health is very strong. The health you get back is maybe a little bit high, but... Um, 
just the, I mean, the, the most interesting part of this graph is Kingen's damage, yeah. uh, and that is that's just Sunfire Aegis right there. That's all you. That's all you have to know. Yeah. Uh, the item is pretty good right now. It's illustrated even in a loss. Yeah. Well, we had a pretty one-sided match. We'll see how this next one though is going to be. Damon up against Afrika after the break. Don't go anywhere.